Welcome to the Brew Crew Review Podcast, the show by fans for fans of your Milwaukee Brewers. Welcome back, Brewer fans, to another edition of the Brew Crew Review Podcast. I'm your host tonight, Vince Travato, joined on the set by the great man himself, Mr. Scott Bartell. Scott, how are you tonight? Uh, doing pretty good. A little nervous. These wild card games, they're a little scary. Yeah, well, you broke the news. But uh, before we get to that, do we have our co-hosts, uh, Craig Mueller or Mr. Chad Collins, on the set tonight? Uh, Craig is DJing a wedding, and Chad is crashing said wedding. Got it. Okay, fair enough. Uh, well, let's just get right back into it then. The uh, Brewers, uh, since our last podcast, of course, have played a um, a series in Colorado. Uh, the series did not go well, <laughs> or according to plan. Um, so the Brewers, after posting uh, a brilliant uh, most of September, uh, do go into the one-game wild card uh, play in-game, uh, having lost three in a row and getting swept by a very bad Rockies team. Um, Scott, do you think that this kills any of the momentum that the Brewers had after after clinching a few nights ago against the Reds? Um, I don't really think so. I mean, like on one hand, like I look at it and I'm like, oh, we got swept and the Cubs, you know, they did their work and they, they took two out of three from St. Louis. So, you know, in theory, if we would have been able to sweep, you know, we could have done some amazing things, but or even taken two out of three for that matter. But uh, unfortunately, like that didn't happen. And by the time, like it, it was already like basically on, on Sunday, it was already well in hand knowing that St. Louis was going to win that game. So uh, we kind of just sort of played down for our Sunday game and eventually got walked off. Um, that's fine. Like it's just, it's hard to fault a team that won 20 games in September. I mean, I still look yeah. at it like, ah, oh, we could have done a little bit more, but. Um, you know, it doesn't always work out that way. Like they say, you can't win them all. But we almost did in all of September. 20 wins is a lot yeah, that's of wins. Tr- yeah, that's, that's true. And, um, yeah, like today's game, for instance, uh, this is different, obviously, in the case of Friday and Saturday when the Brewers were definitely still playing for something. But, you know, in today's game, uh, right away the Colonels got off to, I think, an 8 nothing lead against the Cubs and then a 9 nothing lead. So Craig Council probably did the right thing and started removing certain guys from the game. Uh, against the Rockies, knowing that even if the Brewers were to win, it wouldn't mean anything other than, you know, literally just getting the win for today, getting certain plateaus like the 90 wins on the year, but wasn't going to make any difference in the playoff picture once we kind of had an idea that the Cardinals were going to beat the Cubs today. Um, prime example, of course, being Adrian Hauser being taken out of the game after four innings of one-hit baseball. Yeah, um, yeah, we called off the dogs. Um Smart play. You know, I mean, actually, I was trying to figure out ways that we could lose the game and just not go further and further into extra innings and just make these guys play. I know. I know. know, But, I mean, there are still fans there that bought a ticket in in Colorado and they paid to see competitive baseball, so we couldn't completely lay down. But I think we we did everything we could. um, But just uh, eventually we lost, but it took 13 innings, right? Was thirteen? I think it's the long. <laughs> yeah, time. thirteen innings. Thirteen innings today, and yeah, we didn't. You know, for instance, you know, bring certain guys out of the bullpen that I think in a normal game you would have definitely seen guys uh, like Junior Garrett throw or um, Josh Hader or other other pitchers of that caliber. And instead, um, you know, we threw Ray Black for for several innings today. Jacob Faria threw today. Guys that may not make that postseason roster. Um, so I think that the Brewers were definitely saving some guys, and rightfully so. Um, you know, for a one game, one game playoff against the Nationals here, uh, here in Washington, D.C. on Tuesday evening. Should be exciting. Yeah. Uh, Taylor Williams and uh, Corbin Burns also you could throw in that category. Yeah. Of... Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, more so than Ray Black, probably for sure, actually. Yeah. And, and you know what? I watched them. I watched them both pitch. And I, I remember all the all the promise that I thought they had at the beginning of the year and how they were going to be such a huge part of this bird team. And then I watched them pitch today and I was like, this is why they're not going to be on the roster. Like, I mean, it was, it's just so frustrating to see it because I know they're just super talented. Um, but yeah, I just have not put it together yet. Hopefully they'll reset at the end of this year and, and come back better than ever. 
Yeah, that's the idea. I mean, yeah, we've talked about Corbin Burns at length, and I think we'll save that maybe for the off season. I'd like to get into to, to maybe looking a little bit more at number one, the you know the one game against the Nationals uh, here on Tuesday, and also looking at the roster. You know, so we've got some decisions to make. Do you foresee any major surprises uh, in terms of how we're going to construct that roster for the one game against the the Nationals? I don't like, I'm, I'm trying to think of something, but um, really, I, I just think it's going to be the guys who have been playing mostly in the last month. are still going to be playing mostly. I mean, it's like a wide mess with success kind of a thing. Um, yeah. Do you think, I, do you think Travis Shaw make, do you, does Travis Shaw make that team? If, <laughs> if it were my team, no. Um, there's got to be another left-handed power bat somewhere but I mean it, like he hasn't been able to do it all year he I thought he was like kind of starting to like ever so slightly turn a corner in like the last week but not really I mean <laughs> yeah no I think that the uh, you know it's unfortunately turned into a, a very very lost season for Travis Shaw with the exception of getting getting that walk before bronze grand slam in St. Louis a couple a couple weekends ago which was pretty huge but um Outside of that, yeah, it's just been a disappointment all the way around for Travis Shaw, and let's hope – you know, it'll be very interesting to see what happens to him in the offseason. But, uh, again, we can get to that on future episodes as well. But just curious to hear your take on whether you think he's going to make the roster or not. I I, I don't see it happening. I mean, I, I know it's nice because he can play, you know, second and third, but, like, I just don't I, – I don't see it happening. Yeah, and the Brewers, it should also be pointed out as of this taping, which is uh, the Sunday night, obviously, following the loss to the Rockies, the Brewers are, especially in the outfield, suffering some major injuries. So Ryan Braun has missed the last several games, um, and that should also be pointed out as we discuss the Rockies series. Ryan Braun has been out with an injury. Uh, Lorenzo Cain played on Saturday but got injured in the game on Saturday, so he missed today's game. Um, are you getting any reports from our anonymous source, Tom Carter, about the injury status of these guys and whether or not they're going to be able to play on Tuesday. Well, now that we're talking playoffs, um, Tom actually said more than ever, he wants to remain anonymous. Um, okay. So I guess we should probably maybe be a little bit more judicious about saying his full name. Uh, maybe just okay. TC or Tom C or T Carter, any variant of that except the full Tom Carter. But I mean, it's only nine letters. Like it's so hard to, to trim it down anymore. Um, yeah, I mean, right? No, and and yeah, we can we can try to cl- cloak that perhaps a little, a little bit more in future episodes. But you know, Tom Carter works for the Brewers, so we've got to be a little bit careful about using his name. I, I get it. So we'll 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 try to do better next time. Yeah, and I mean, you know, he's one of many inside sources that we have within the organization uh, because. You know, as as people know, like you, actually, all four of our hosts, we all met by working uh, in that organization as well, and so um, right. you know, we have we all have our inside sources, and so. I mean, but, but Tom's our favorite. That's why we give him the most credit. But he did say yeah, that did. Um, neither one of those injuries uh, worries him too much. Um, he says, <laughs> "Bronze always, <laughs> Bronze always hurt." It seems like, uh, but he's never out too long. And um, Kane is always uh, – he's always hurt, but he's usually playing through it. So uh, he didn't seem too worried. Okay. Well, good to know. Um, and thank you to Tom Carter for that bit of information. Um, all right. So moving on then, um, we've discussed it a little bit hypothetically uh, in previous episodes, but now that it's becoming a reality, who are the Brewers going to be pitching on Tuesday night to start the game in, in Washington? Uh, Woodruff. I think we announced it. Okay, so that's not breaking news. Got well, it. Well, um, I mean, it is breaking. It just got announced, like, I think about an hour before this taping, maybe less. So, um, and we're going to have this out probably an hour from when we finish. So, it'll, it'll only be two hours old breaking news. So, yeah, I mean, that's... It's got, although we did talk about it in our pre-production meeting, we were going to pretend like we hadn't heard it, like it had not been announced yet, but now we kind of blew that. So, maybe interns can edit that, but... In any oh, event, hang on, uh, a yeah, so Brent... hang on a second. Breaking news uh, just came over the wire. Um, Brandon Woodruff is going to start. There we go. We're still uh, going to so probably we're... post it before Hardcourt. 
Oh, I'm sure. Our, well, our <laughs> colleague is a little slow on the Twitter, although no one can read his Twitter anyway because he blocks everybody, but um, that's okay. Um, yeah. He has so, better interns than us, though. A true story. Um, not hard, though. Not a difficult uh, task to fulfill. Um, Scott, so what do you think about the, the starting of Woodruff? Do you think that that's a good pick by the Brewers? Would you pick somebody else? Where do you stand on, on Brandon Woodruff uh, right now? And obviously, he had very recently come back from an injury. He had pitched in several games since his uh, return, but hasn't seen really extended action up to that point in, since July. So it had been a little bit. Are you worried at all about Woodruff going into this game? Nope. Um, the only thing is, um, I, like, in all of his stints since coming back, I guess he's, he's only thrown a couple of innings at a time now. However, um, I think he's going to go twice through the order, whatever that happens to be. So probably around between four and six innings, like probably five. And then uh, I, I think that'll be it. Like, I don't think they're going to do anything crazy with him. Even if he's pitching lights out, um, I think they'll have a relatively yeah. short leash. Yeah, um, that makes some sense. And looking at the opposition, the Washington Nationals, um, you know, it's it's widely known that, that their weak spot is their bullpen, uh, one of the worst in baseball. But that looks to be something that they can mitigate a bit, especially in a one-game playoff scenario like this is, because um, they've already announced that not only will Max Scherzer start, but they're going to be able to, to follow him up in the event of any trouble from the Brewers with Steven Strasburg and others uh, from the rotation, if need be. Um, obviously it's a one and done. Whoever loses goes home for the winter. So it's, um, you know, it's all, all hands on deck. So, uh, you know, how do you think the Brewers should approach this series? And um, even though the Nationals bullpen is one of the worst in baseball, their starting rotation is one of the best in baseball. How do you think that that plays into, you know, the, the preparation for this game? I don't know. I was going to say some troll play. Like, oh, play from ahead. Like, yeah, that'd be great. Everyone would love to do that. But um I, I really just think that we just have to have good quality at bats against uh, Scherzer. Like, I, I think that we might be um, a little aggressive uh, going at him. I think we'll just stack our lineup and uh, just go for it. Like, I don't, I don't think we're going to have a lot of patient at bats and like working pitch counts to like try to get him out. Like, you remember like the the Brady Clark years when <laughs> that guy was just. He was constantly just putting together 10 pitch at bats. And, you know, we would have like our, the opposing starter would be out in like the fifth inning. And then we'd, then we'd make a run on their bullpen. Like, I don't see us necessarily doing that so much. It's going to be like, um, be more aggressive. The first pitch might be the best pitch that you see from him. So we'll see. Fair, fair enough. Um, should be pointed out that the Brewers did go, I believe it was four and two against the Nationals on the year. Could you have the interns look that up, maybe? Uh, I know the Brewers split a uh, series, or uh, I'm sorry, swept a series at home uh, in Milwaukee against the Nationals. I can't remember if it was a three game set or a four game set. And then uh, the Brewers took one of three games out here in D.C. in a series that took place in, um, in August. So the Brewers have been have, have played the Nationals pretty heads up, you know, over the course of the year. That being said, obviously this is a little bit of a different circumstance. We, again, don't have the benefit of dealing with the Nationals bullpen at this point. Um, so, you know, do you think that that gives the Brewers a little bit of confidence uh, going into this game? And uh, what do you think should be the keys to success for Milwaukee? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't, I, I think that this team is just as confident as they've been all year. I mean, we're still even even with getting swept in Colorado. I mean, we're still the hottest team in, in baseball right now. So, um, I mean, I, I think that this team knows that they can hang with anybody, especially when you're talking about a one game, uh, yeah, one game playoff. Yeah, and I and I just want to reiterate too. Again, with the sweep, I think it's a kind of a, I don't know, it, it's kind of kind of tough to say. This is probably literally the only series of the year where that doesn't matter as much, just because again with you know, the way that things played out today, I, I think that the game could have very easily ended differently if the Brewers would have been playing their frontline players, um, you know, here resting guys like Braun, resting guys like Kane. I, I just think that, you know, again, despite that, that the Brewers are definitely, like you said, the hottest team in the game right now. And I don't think that really is displaced by, you know, having a couple losses here at the end of the month. So it's going to be really interesting. Um, 
you know, I, I am projecting that. Well, I guess we should get into that. Do you think? Would you want to make a projection for the for the Brewers and Nationals one game series? How do you how do you see this one shaking out? I'll say Brewers win four to two. All right, I'm going to go a little higher scoring in a weird uh, twist that we knocked Scherzer out early, and the net starters are not accustomed to pitching in that role out of the bullpen. So I'm going to weirdly say I'll, I'll say it's eight seven. I think it could be a very close game. Um, we had the benefit of seeing the Nationals and the Brewers play in a great, great 14 inning game uh, in one of those games out here in DC back in August, and uh, one of the most fun games of the season in my mind. So I. I'm hoping that it's not quite that, that dramatic. I'm sure we probably lost a couple fans that night. And there were some casualties just because of the, the ridiculous nature of the game. So hopefully it doesn't come to that, but I can see a close and high scoring game. So um, I will go on record to project a Brewers win, but uh, boy, uh, I like thinking optimistically. Let's just say eight, seven Brewers. Well, your game sounds a lot more entertaining, but also a lot more, well, they're both going to be nail biting. I mean, as long as we were yeah. talking briefly about that Rocky series, like Sunday's game by the time, um, I mean, by like the third inning of that game, uh, we already kind of knew our fate. So that game didn't mean anything. The game that did mean something though, was the game before when unfortunately uh, we were one out away from winning and uh, regrettably Josh Hader gave up yet another home run. Um, do, yep. How do you see Hader being used, I guess, in a wild card, and then if we are lucky um, to move on, uh, do you see him as like he's? We're going to see a little bit of Josh Hader every game, or do you think it's going to be more like we're going to throw him out there for two, three innings, like like we have in the past? The weird thing about the playoffs, the postseason, and certainly in these one-run games is I don't think that you necessarily even come into it with a with a, a game plan that's set in stone. I mean, you know, you use Hader in situations, but if you need Josh Hader to get you through two or three innings of any of these playoff games, I could see that happening. So certainly in the game against the nationals, I expect to see him throw multiple innings. I think that um, bringing him in to throw, you know, to a couple batters or even one inning or whatever the case might be is probably unlikely just because he still is the best pitcher in our bullpen. So you're going to want to throw him out there as often and as much as you can, because that gives you the best chance of success. Um, I think the real question comes into what inning you're going to see him, and I don't think the council is going to hesitate to use him earlier on um, in a game to try to bridge that gap between what's hopefully a good start from Woodruff, but if the situation calls for it, they're going to bring Hader in in the sixth inning if need be. I mean, uh, you know, if the Nationals are uh, having a rally, for instance, in the sixth, then you got to stop that rally in order to keep yourself competitive during the game. There's no reason that you wouldn't bring in Josh Hader and – if he's still the best pitcher to, to, to give you the best chance for success the next inning, you're going to not hesitate to keep him on that mound as long as, as long as he can go. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, it's definitely going to depend on the situation. I wouldn't be surprised if we used him early. Um, I have a feeling that we're, we're probably not going to um, ideally have him work more than two innings in a stint but um, not necessarily just the one inning. And I don't, I agree with you that I don't necessarily think that we're going to save him as the closer or finisher or whatever you want to call it. Um, but having said that, um, is there, is there one person that you would want closing a game if Hater is not available? Like who, who would you want in that role? Um, at this point in the season and I'm surprised to be saying this now, but um, at this point in the season, I'd probably pick Drew Pomeranz because yep. <laughs> he's had, he, well, he's had success out of the bullpen, right? He's been lights out since he's been acquired from the, the Giants in a trade earlier in the season and um, pitched well out of the pen. He's got he's a guy who had started, you know, in uh, many years in his in his previous iterations of his career. So we know that he can throw multiple innings if need be. So not just the closer, but in a close game, say it's a tie game and it's the ninth, you have to preserve a lead. You know that he can go two, three innings if need be. Um, and he's been lights out, you know, since he's been in a Brewers uniform. So um, he's also a bit of a veteran, unlike, um, you know, another guy, and he had a bad outing in Colorado, but a guy like Jay Jackson has also pitched very well over the last month. Um he, I think Pomeranz brings a little bit more experience to the table. So you want him out there in those clutch situations, 
Um, if you've got a couple run lead, I think you go with Junior Guerra maybe to bridge the gap a bit, um, you know, because he's another guy who can throw multiple innings. But if you're talking about a pure closer situation in a tie game uh, or a game that you're ahead by a run, two runs, whatever it is, uh, I think you're bringing Pomeranz if it's two runs or less or a tie game. Yeah, I mean, as well as he's pitching. If, 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 if Hader's not available, I, yeah, I should throw that caveat. Right, out. yeah. If, if, we, not if we used yeah. him earlier to put out a fire in yeah. like the seventh, have him yep. stick around for the eighth, you know, yep. and then we need somebody to work the ninth. Uh, I mean, Brett Suter's name should probably be tossed out there, but I, I don't see him in that closer role. Um, I don't know, like maybe I'm just being stereotypical, like I want a fireballer out there, um, but – I, I I don't necessarily see that him being in that role. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't expect to see Jordan Lyles for the wild card game because I would assume that he's going to be tabbed uh, the starter if we move on. But yep, um, would not be surprised if we saw uh, Gio Gonzalez come on to face a lefty, especially if we're going to have Pomerantz and, and Hayter throwing full innings. Um, I wouldn't be yep. surprised if we use him as like a sort of loogie type and yep. I would not be surprised. I mean, we could still see like Zach Davies or Chase Anderson tomorrow in the wild card game as well. I mean, everybody's available for Washington. Everybody's available for the Brewers. So it's going to be wild. Yep. That's what I love about the wild card games. Like you, there is no tomorrow. Like you just, you have to win. And so you're going to do all kinds of weird stuff. And it, that's what makes them so fun. Yeah, and we should point out some rules to our listeners um, as we go into this game. Uh, the Brewers are allowed to reset their roster in the event that we would win against the Nationals on Tuesday night. So the roster that you go into the game with against Washington is truly just for that game. So you stack it however you want to stack it. Guys that, you know, maybe hurting a little bit or not available or what would be day-to-day uh, injury-wise. Um even if they're going to be back later in the week, you wouldn't necessarily keep them on the roster for this game because you want as many arms available as you can. So we would get the chance to reset in the event that we win. And we started a series against the Dodgers um, later on in the week. So um, this is truly just an all hands on deck type of mentality. And my guess is, is that the guys are traveling or just landed in Washington DC tonight, still not necessarily sure who's all going to actually be on the 25 man roster by game time on Tuesday. So with that being said, there's a slight chance that Shaw could be on the wild card roster because um, we're going to have a, a plethora of arms because basically anybody in the starting rotation uh, can right. pretty much go. I mean, I wouldn't even be surprised if we desperately needed it. If it was an 18 inning game, we could throw Hauser out again, even though he well, threw the that, day. That's exactly right. And that's why Craig Council pulled him after four very successful innings today, which again is why I look at the sweep with, a little bit of a jaded view. I think I think if Hauser throws, you know, six, seven innings, um, maybe some of those runs that we gave up to Colorado are never given up. So um, Hauser was pulled with the intention, I believe, of having him available if need be on Tuesday. He has a day of rest tomorrow, um, like everybody does. So the, he, he will have a day of recovery to be able to potentially throw on Tuesday if need be. And he's another guy who's been very successful uh, down the stretch for us this year. Yeah, it's going to be wild. So with that in mind, like since everyone in our starting rotation is available, we're going to have so many pitchers that I wouldn't be surprised that this wild card roster um, is going to have like an extra hitter or two on it. Um, we might go a little bit short right. in the bullpen and then bring those guys back if we're lucky enough to move on. Um, if we right. do win, we play the Dodgers in a five-game set. Um, so, yeah, it should be interesting. Yeah, it, yeah, and it, and it will be. And so many of the guys that the Brewers brought up, you know, in the final month from the minor leagues were actually fairly successful um, after being brought up from San Antonio. So you've got guys, again, like Jay Jackson, who spent most of the year in the minor leagues, but who've actually been pretty key contributors, key contributors for the Brewers uh, in the bullpen down the stretch. Um, remains to be seen if those guys have done enough to earn a roster spot when it comes down to 25 guys. So, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see what the Brewers do. Um, on a quick side note, I will just say it would be sweet and poetic justice if it's Gio Gonzalez on the hill uh, for the Brewers who picks up a win or does something very good in a one-game playoff game against his old team, the Washington Nationals, because 
Um, the big rip on Gio in Washington is that he was never good in the playoffs. So I would love to see Gio uh, in a Brewers uniform <laughs> pitching well for Washington uh, against Washington for Milwaukee um, out here on their home field. Yeah, that would be um, absolutely great for sure. And then if you if you really look at all the other teams <laughs> in the playoffs, um, you know we kind of have an axe to grind with every single one of them. I mean, the Cardinals, we don't even have to start. I mean, I, there's so many reasons yeah. why I hate that team. But um, the Dodgers, obviously, you, all you have to do is look back one year. Um, that's, that's an yep. easy one. And then the Braves, hey, they stole our franchise, man. So, like – Yeah, they left Milwaukee. They left Milwaukee in a, in a, in a huff. So, I don't think, the, you know, longtime Brewers fans or Milwaukee baseball fans have forgotten that. So, you're right. I mean, there is a bit of that bias. Uh, biasness against the Braves and for good reason I mean that's that's the only professional sports franchise to leave Wisconsin ever in the history of the state so uh, yeah it's a big deal yeah so we got um, a little bit of a rivalry uh, with with every single one of those teams so I I really hope that we're able to make a a good run in this playoffs and and really go deep and be able to uh, avenge some of those uh, previous issues Yes, sir. Um, all right, Scott. I think that we've kind of covered things. Any other thoughts uh, on the on the big game on Tuesday? Mm. I mean, I was going to say like a, um, like I was saying that I didn't want to talk about it, but I guess I will anyway. Is like it's it's great to get out in front, but especially because we're on the road. And I, I don't know. I mean, you're in Washington. I mean, this isn't this isn't like a diehard, rabid like fan base this is a fan base who is kind of used to getting let down in the playoffs um i think oh come on they've, they've got they've got real no real fan base out here i mean i know that's <laughs> trying to be nice to make, but <laughs> no no the hell with it i think i think you know living out here uh i'm kind of you know probably representative of a good chunk of this quote-unquote fan base of the washington national so um i'll just say this I go to uh, a lot of national games. I go to I go to how many games I go to this year? Probably forty games, thirty some games, um, wow. at least. So, yeah. And I would go and I would watch baseball because I love baseball. But I never was a you know fan of the na- of the Nationals. And I think that that's true of a lot of people out here who are from different areas. A lot of people come to Washington to you know work to do whatever that they do. But they they're own fan base suffers for a few reasons number one they are uh not necessarily locals to washington like i was just saying so they've got other allegiances like i do with the brewers uh number two because of the fact that they didn't have a team for you know a generation plus uh between the washington senators and the nationals arrival here in 2005 they lost a lot of people um because of that um and number three it's just the kind of town like you know it's a lot of people go to games because it's a place to go or a, a place to be seen so to speak not necessarily because they love baseball or the team so you know i i just get that vibe out here there's no tailgating which is a big gripe of mine um so I, there's a lot of issues i i see it i like i said i go to a lot of games in a normal situation sure it's fine if they do well but um i i just don't think that this is the, the best of fan bases so they can you know they can they can talk a good game in some ways but i I don't think that that's necessarily going to come into it. In fact, I'll be shocked if there's not a good, a very good contingent of Brewer fans out here uh, on Tuesday night. Well, I was looking at the postseason results of the Washington Nationals, and um, I, I did have a question about it. First of all, it says here that their only divisional series win was in 1981, so I'm assuming that's what, Expos, or what, what the hell is that? Say that again. Uh, it says that our own their only postseason series win was in 1981 against yeah, yep. the Phillies. So is that we're talking Expos way back then, or? Yes, we are. That was the strike short in year of '81. The same year as the Brewers made it in the American League, and uh, yes, the Expos. That was the Tim Raines, Andre Dawson Expos. Okay, so we'll throw that out the window then, and let's just talk Washington Nationals. Um, made the playoffs in 2000. 12, 14, 16, 17, lost every series. So maybe, like, I guess technically there's no such thing as a one-game series, but, I mean, anything at this point would be a win for that franchise to be able to just say that they, you know, eliminated something and moved on to something else. Like, yep. Um, but I, even if they do win the wild card, like, I don't see them getting past the Dodgers. 
but we'll see. Who knows? That's why it's that's why yeah, we play the games, happen this, right? Any, anything can happen this time of year, and I know that. Um, so our viewers are going to be on edge to 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 know this. Scott, are you uh, are you coming out here for the game on Tuesday evening? Um, it, I'm going to say that I'm 90% sure that I will. I think at this point, actually, I'm, I'm looking at prices of tickets and they're not great, but yeah, yeah you know, you know, this is like tomorrow. You got to get out of here, right? I mean, yeah, no, it would be like, literally like I'm going to be looking at red eyes after I get this podcast up for our fans, because I, I mean, they deserve it. I mean, what a season. But yeah, no, that, that would absolutely be the plan. And there's so much, like I've never been to that city. So, I mean, this would be like not only baseball, but there's so much rich history there um, that I, I really just, I want to get out there and, and spend a couple days. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, love to, love to take you around and show you the sights out here, Scotty. So uh, let me know. Uh, obviously, well, we can talk offline from this recorded podcast. But uh, yes, we will, we will hopefully see you out here on Tuesday night. Um, I will definitely be there. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a, hopefully a great game for, for Brewer fans, and, and hopefully the result is what we're looking for. So, I, you know, it, it, if I'm being honest in a very selfish way, the, the Brewers playing out here in a playoff series is something that um, I was kind of rooting for. I, I wanted it to be in the, you know, somehow some scenario that would lead us to the NLCS because then I could easily go to all the Nationals games and head back home to Milwaukee for the other games. But, um, hey, I'll take it. So it should be fun. Tuesday should be good. The city should be uh, excited. Well, they're going to be pretty passionless, but uh, Brewer fans will be excited. It'll be it'll be a really good good night of baseball. Let's hope. Yeah, it should be really exciting. The only the only problem with playing uh, a one game wild card elimination game on the road is that you can't win via the walk off. And so um, I'm hoping that we're able to go to the game. And that the game ends and you hear that that sound of like 45,000 people just like groaning with, with disappointment. Um, and just you just feel the air getting let out of the stadium. Um, I mean, it's, it's not quite as climactic as a walk-off win, but we'll take it. Yep, exactly. So I'll take whatever we can get, man, to keep playing baseball. This has been really a fun September and – and, you know, playing relevant and meaningful games right down to the last game today, I think that, you know, Brewer fans, uh, you know, well, I'll say across Wisconsin, but even in, in other parts of the country like myself are, and, and yourself, are, are, we're glued to the game even today. And until the, the Cubs started to lose badly against St. Louis, we had a shot at, you know, tying and winning that division today. So um, Actually, you know Brewer's what? Old... We should talk about that too. I didn't mean to interrupt your thought. You can come back to No, it, go but... ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. But, okay, so Joe Madden gets fired the day, like, on the last day of the season, not after he gets to coach the last game. I don't understand that. I mean, does any of it stem with, like, he says, uh, what, what was the last thing he pretty much said as a manager? Like, he didn't care what the hell Brewer fans thought about him benching yeah, pretty, his starters. Like, I don't get They'll it. Keep but it classy. This was just keeping it classy. And here's the thing about the Cubs and their fans. You know, if I'm going to go off on a little rant about different fan bases and franchises around the national league tonight, you know, it's okay what they're doing. It's okay not to play all your best players at the end of the year when you're already eliminated. I get that. You know, you're not going to risk injury of certain guys. And they had guys that came back and were banged up guys like Baez and Rizzo. And I get why you wouldn't want to push them once you're out. But that being said, um, who else in baseball besides the Chicago Cubs, announce that publicly to the press and make a thing of it. It's just always the way of that franchise to go off, make a big media story out of something that, you know, they could literally just be quiet. Could you ever imagine Craig Council in that situation saying anything even remotely similar? I it just, the way that they do things, the way that they conduct their business um, makes me like them less and less and less every year. And I didn't even think that was possible. So it's, um, it was, it was pretty appalling to me, not because of the, the actual, comments or what they implied but really just because they were said at all and uh i am not going to be shedding too many tears that joe madden is no longer a manager especially in our division yeah i don't know i mean i just don't think it doesn't make any sense to me though like why not just wait six hours then fire him then i mean i don't yeah i've never understood that i i, I don't get that either like why why do that before the season ends it makes no sense no, and I, mean, I don't know if a team do. I don't know if teams do that, but like you know, because you still have some attention on baseball at that time in these cities. You know, before people really fully switch to the football or the off season or whatever it is. 
I, but I don't get it. Like uh, firing a manager two days from now or tomorrow is still going to be a pretty big story in Chicago. You know, why, why do it today? Why? I mean, they literally would have had to pull him off of a road trip, right? To go home a, a day early. I mean, it makes no sense at all. Yeah. If you're going to do that, then let him go like the minute your team is eliminated or something like that. But even that, like let him finish out the year. Like this is the guy who, you know, did help bring you a world series, like has gotten into the playoffs several times. Like, um, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not saying Joe Mann's my favorite manager, but there's a lot of other managers that I, um, that I think aren't as good or I care a lot less about. So, um, yeah. I don't know. I, I saw a short list of like people that they were considering for manager. Now former brewer, Mark Loretta, who's currently on their coaching staff is a potential candidate. Yep. Uh, they also yep. threw out Joe Girardi, uh, former Yankees manager. Um, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I look at that list and I'm like, eh, eh, doesn't nobody there really scares me. So that's fine. Like, I think Ben's probably better than any of them. So, okay. Yeah, and uh, I don't spend too much time worrying about that, but I do think that they're probably likely to I, I continue that regression. I mean, unless they're going to make the massive and wholesale changes in that front office, they're going to continue to spend money foolishly uh, in many cases. So um, them winning a World Series is one of the biggest regrets of my life, uh, but here we are. So I'll take one you know, World Series title for them in every 110 or 20 years, whatever it was. So um, – uh, neither here nor there. I'm I'm much more focused on this game against Washington, and hopefully we can, you know, be talking about our own World Series championship instead of worrying about the Cubs. Yeah, that would be nice. I mean, obviously Milwaukee hasn't seen a a championship now in what sixty years? Is my math right? Something like that. Nineteen um, uh, nineteen nineteen fifty seven. Fifty seven. Different yeah. franchise. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So it's certainly been a while, and it, it, like you astutely pointed out it would be the first for the Milwaukee Brewers franchise um it would be um very very exciting like I, I for some reason like I always thought growing up like it's more of a matter of when like how old you're going to be when they win their first and the, the more years go by you start to think oh wow this is turning into a matter of if <laughs> so really like <laughs> well, to see this hopefully we still got a long time to go here but uh yeah you never know and the, you're you're right. I mean, the fact that the Brewers – and this really dawned on me this week uh, during the, the night – I guess it was the night that we taped our last podcast, but I don't think I mentioned this point. The Brewers have only appeared – well, this will be the sixth postseason appearance for the Brewers in franchise history. That's 50 years of – well, the team in Milwaukee and another year in Seattle. So 51 years of the franchise's history. And this is our sixth postseason appearance. So I just hope that fans can pause and take a step back sometimes and kind of reflect on what it is that they're, you know, witnessing and experiencing uh, when the team actually is good enough to make the playoffs. And Scott, I know that you've been a, a, a long time, a long suffering Brewers fan, just like myself and Craig and, and Chad. And, you know, we all, we all were there in the nineties when the team had no hope of sniffing the playoffs after that 92 season. And, uh, the fact that we didn't even have a winning record between the 1993 seasons and 2006, um, you know, all all the, those long years of suffering by Brewers fans, to be in this position right now is still really exciting. And I love the passion that gets, you know, fans upset after a particular loss, like a very rough loss yesterday uh, in Colorado that, um, you know, probably should have been a win, quite frankly. But that being said, we've still made the playoffs for the first time in consecutive years since 1981 and 1982. Uh, again, sixth time ever in franchise history that we're actually making the postseason. So these are exciting times to be a Brewers fan. We've got nothing uh, to hang our heads about this season. And I think that, um, you know, if we are able to play like the Brewers have been playing for the last month, uh, you know, out here in D.C. on Tuesday night, I think the Brewers are going to be in good shape and could surprise a lot of people this postseason. Yeah, I really hope so. And I mean, I, I do want to say, like, I mean, I know that I, I guess I consider myself a long suffering Brewer fan, but I mean, it's, um, it's even when we were working at the stadium during the worst season of Milwaukee Brewers history of over a hundred losses, like, um, that's a phenomenal place to be and a phenomenal sport to watch. And maybe the team wasn't very good, but man, like, um, if that's suffering, man, that's 
that's phenomenal. I mean, there's, it's almost like, the, it's almost like the Simpsons, like you appreciate it because of the first like 10 years. And then like the last 15 years, it's like, ho oh, hum, who cares? Like they haven't done anything, but you get like you, I would be like a long suffering Simpsons watcher if I was still watching it right now, but I would still appreciate it for everything that they've ever done. You know, just, it, it's been an absolute privilege. Uh, to watch The Simpsons and, of course, to be a Brewers fan. So I guess that's where I'm Well, of course. At. But, hey, we're not dying. We're in the postseason. So let's look positively at this, Scott. We've got a good chance to win on Tuesday, I think, and and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. In the meantime, I did want to say thanks to all of our uh, fans on Twitter. We've continued to grow on our Twitter account. Um, so we'd love to continue to, to earn your support. Follow, give us a follow at Brew Crew Review 1 on Twitter. Uh, you can email us your questions at Brew Crew Review Podcasts with an S at gmail.com. And if you're listening to this, you know how to find us, but you can uh, get us on iTunes or a couple other podcast uh, streaming services as well. Um, Scott, really quick, do we have anything in the mailbag on our uh, email questions oh, this week? I didn't, I didn't even look. Here, let, let me stall for a second. Um, I'll try to do yeah, okay, go ahead. two things at once here. I can't even do one usually. Scott, better – I can help you stall. Better catcher uh, in the early 90s Brewers teams, Joe Kamak or Tim McIntosh. What do you think? Uh, I'll say Tim McIntosh. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, I well, he was a little bit more of a disappointment because he was kind of considered a top prospect at one point for the Brewers. So, yeah, but they're both pretty terrible. So, well, thanks, <laughs> Um, I will say this here while I'm trying to look this up at the same time. I don't even know what our email oh. is. Like, uh, group Bru- review podcast with an S at Gmail. Remember, we just talk about this also um we Bye. one other relevant uh relevant stat that we should point out uh kristen yelich did end the year by the attrition of not playing partially for the last three and a half weeks um, with the highest batting average in the national league so he becomes the uh second brewer to lead the league in batting average and the first brewer is also 2018 christian yelich so christian yelich second year in a row led the league in batting average uh, so congratulations to him uh, for being the first and the second Milwaukee Brewer to ever lead the league in that category. Absolutely phenomenal. And hopefully um, if these voters get everything figured out, hopefully they vote for him over Bellinger or Rendon, who uh, is, I guess, a dark horse candidate, right? We're going to be seeing him in the wild card. So that's exciting. Um, I don't see any, I, I don't see any emails, so I don't think we got any. I guess I'm also going to point out though, um, Craig astutely pointed out that if we do win the wild card, we get to play the Dodgers in a five game series. And he f- feels like we have a better chance of winning the five game series over a seven game series. So uh, technically, this might actually be a better path for us. So um, I well. certainly hope that that works out. Um, but, yeah, no email today. So I guess, I don't know, if you just want to wrap this up. and Yeah, it sounds great, Scott. Well, hey, thanks for listening, everybody. We uh, look forward to hopefully coming back at you after Brewers win on Tuesday night. Scott and I should be there in person uh, to bring you some coverage. We'll be posting stuff on social media. So stay tuned for that. Uh, very much looking forward to the game. And, uh And uh, thanks again to our co-hosts, Craig and Chad, for uh, all the regular season work that they've done on this podcast. Uh, Looking forward to continuing that through the postseason and the offseason and and, and in the 2020 baseball season as well. So thanks again for listening, everybody. Remember to stay classy, Wisconsin, and go Brewers. Go Brewers. And talk to us on Twitter because it's probably going to be one of us answering your questions or comments or, you know, cheering right alongside you. Thank you so much, Brewer fans. Really, really hope. (laughs) Wait, can you do that again? I got to like sync that up later. So here, just hang on one second. So yeah, no, we'll, um, we'll be talking to you guys on Twitter. Thank you so much again for absolutely everything. And um, was there something else I was going to say? I don't think so. Well, that was anticlimactic. All right. Oh yeah, that's right. Hopefully we get to have another, uh, we want to postpone that like end of season podcast as long as we can wouldn't it be great if we get to do that like a month or so from now that would be nice absolutely scott absolutely we'll bring it to you then fans 
Yep. But we're going to, you know, keep giving you guys as much content as you want. So thanks again so much. And now, here, let's try it now. I, I'm not going to edit it, though. <laughs> nah, nah, the interns will all do it. All right. Thanks, everybody. Go Brewers. Go Brewers. Dun, 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 dun.